Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. We've got some big news about a controversial law which bans abortions after about six weeks of pregnancy. The Texas Supreme Court kicking back the challenge to the so-called heartbeat bill. Today, you might have gotten a push alert from the KSAT app about this story. The court ruled that the state medical licensing officials do not have authority to enforce the law. Abortion providers tried to argue that the law is actually enforced by state officials, which would give them someone to bring a constitutional challenge against in court. The case will now return to the Fifth Circuit. It will likely use the Texas Supreme Court's interpretation of state law, which would end this federal challenge. There are other challenges to the law, including a multi-district litigation where a state district judge found the law to be unconstitutional. That case is under appeal. Also new at noon, the Great Hearts Forest Heights community mourning the loss of a teacher who died yesterday morning. In an email sent to parents and students, Forest Heights said 23-year-old Michael Echenis was killed in a parking lot outside of his home. Public data shows that Echenis's last known address was in the 4800 block of Gus Eckert. It's the same location where San Antonio police responded to a shooting just before 8 o'clock yesterday morning. We told you about it on the news at noon. Police have yet to confirm whether Echenis was the victim in that shooting at the scene officers told us they believe that the victim was just trying to get into his vehicle when he was shot witnesses says they saw a man in a blue hoodie running from the scene outside with live cam if you are worried about saving gas go south because the wind is blowing north and you can probably <laughs> not use your accelerator so much hey Woohoo! good point david thank you very good point. We're trying to help people wherever here. I can. Yeah, Problem yeah. is the return trip. Well, see, there you go. <laughs> now you're getting practical about it. Yeah. Well, the wind is really going to continue to be a nuisance through the end of the day. This weekend is definitely not going to be like what you're seeing out there right now. We will start a warming trend this weekend, but that's after the widespread freeze that is still in the forecast tonight. So let me show you how temperatures have fallen so far today. At 5 a.m., the front was through the hill country. Places like Kerrville and Fredericksburg were in the 40s. The rest of us were still in the 60s. Then front, a couple hours ahead of schedule, worked its way down into San Antonio, dropped temperatures at the airport into the upper 40s by 8 a.m. Uh, since then, temperatures have been falling through the 40s, even through the 30s across parts of the hill country. Um, and here's where we're sitting right now. The front now is south of places like Corpus Christi and Laredo. So the front is out of here, but we'll continue to be left with cold and windy conditions today. A wind advisory actually is just going into effect now. This will be in place until midnight, 12 a.m. Saturday for essentially the whole area. And this wind advisory is out mainly for winds gusting up to 45 miles per hour um, as we get into the late afternoon and evening hours. So we've got the wind. We've got unseasonably cold air that has moved in. What we'll be watching for the rest of the afternoon is the clearing line that now is starting to uh, work into some of our westernmost counties. Already a little bit of sunshine in places like Del Rio and even Edwards County. So that clearing line will move east this afternoon. Skies clear tonight, and that's part of our widespread freeze overnight into Saturday morning. More on that coming up here in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Katie. Now to the latest out of Ukraine. There is an urgent concern growing for the city that's under siege, Mariupol. Hundreds of thousands of residents are trapped there. And around the country, shaky ceasefires to allow civilians to evacuate ended last night. And Russia widened its offensive in Ukraine, striking airfields in the west and an industrial city in the east. All the while, that huge armored column that had been stalled for over a week outside of Kyiv started moving again. ABC's Ian Panel is in Ukraine with more. We're in the small town of Bilohorodka, about 20 miles due west out of the capital, Kyiv. And this has now become one of those satellite frontline towns where they're trying to process people desperately fleeing the battle zone. We've been talking to some people who've been hunkered down in their basement for days, some people in their 80s, some in wheelchairs, desperately trying to get out to safety. What's happening here is that the police and emergency services are firstly checking the vehicles, many of whom are carrying white flags to signify that they are civilians, and then 
and they're being given humanitarian aid. There's a soup kitchen here. They're giving people something warm to eat and then transporting them closer to the capital, Kyiv. But as that happens, of course, Russian troops now closing in. U.S. officials estimating the Russian forces are now within nine miles or so of the capital. And as we saw on Thursday, there was a concerted effort to push in Russian forces from the east around the town of Bravari. It was a stunning ambush by the Ukrainian forces who had obviously zeroed in on the Russian tanks and armoured vehicles who were pretty much wide open to attack. They were then targeted with artillery. You can see in that graphic video released by the Ukrainian military, those vehicles, those tanks being destroyed, uh, and then the Ukrainian military saying that they were forced to withdraw. But of course, they're going to push back in as they are around here as well. But Putin shows no signs of slowing down. We're now hearing that they're ready to accept thousands of fighters from the Middle East amid fears that this conflict could spread. Ian Panel, ABC News, in Bila Harodka, Ukraine. And today, President Biden announcing new stricter sanctions aimed at holding Russia accountable for its unprovoked war on Ukraine. The president saying that the U.S., along with the European Union and a group of seven countries, will revoke Russia's most favored nation trade status. The U.S. will also ban imports of Russian seafood, alcohol and diamonds. It's going to make it harder for Russia to do business with the United States and doing it in unison with other nations to make up half of the global economy will be another crushing blow to the Russian economy. It's already suffering very badly from our sanctions. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin met with Belarus's leader, Alexander Lukashenko, attempting to put a positive spin on the sanctions, saying the USSR had lived successfully with sanctions. It's a questionable claim given the Soviet Union's eventual collapse. However, Russian citizens are feeling the pressure of the global sanctions. Businesses are closing their doors after several major change, chains rather announced that they are stopping operations in Russia. Meantime, back here at home, in local news, smashed cars, several broken bones. That's the result of an overnight crash. It happened at the base of a busy highway flyover, the ramp from Interstate 10 to Loop 410. Katrina Weber has the story from the scene. She tells us why police say that this began as a much smaller problem. According to police, this started as a two-car crash, but before they knew it, they had double the trouble on their hands. It quickly involved four cars. The mess shut down that area of the highway for a while. Fortunately, this was before the morning commute. Police got the call around 2.30 this morning, then began working to handle a two-car crash. One driver had suffered some broken bones. Within minutes, a third car came along and crashed into the original two. Then police say as they were working to clear that scene, a fourth car plowed into all of it. It doesn't appear there were any other injuries. But with debris everywhere and their investigation going on, police did have to shut down this area of the highway for a while. Now, most drivers now probably wouldn't even know it happened. Traffic does appear to be back to normal. Reporting from the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The city of Casterville implementing stage one water restrictions. Residents are only allowed to water before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. on their designated days to water. They're determined by the last digit of your address. You can see the schedule on your screen there. This is for irrigation systems and sprinklers. Watering with a handheld hose is okay any time of the day. Almost 90% of homes and businesses in Seguin and McQueenie have gas service again. Thousands of people lost their access to natural gas earlier this week. Yesterday, Centerpoint Energy crews went back to the homes and businesses still without gas to reconnect the lines. The energy company says another company damaged the gas line that disrupted service, and that gas line was fixed Wednesday. A plane at San Antonio International Airport going to be standing out from the rest. Why it's decked out in Spurs colors. Still ahead. And also coming up in sports, the Cole basketball team is back in the state championship game. Andrew Seeley is here and he's got a preview of tomorrow's Class 3A matchup. Check it out, the first Spurs branded plane touchdown at San Antonio International wow. Airport today. Sweet ride, the Airbus A32 greeted by a water cannon salute. The plane itself features the Spurs team colors and logo and even the flight crew decked out in Spurs jerseys. 
But it wasn't just the plane that was greeted with fanfare. Passengers got in on the fun as well. It's a whole new experience. That was great. Like, we didn't expect that we, like, arrived to the airport in Mexico and there was, like, balloons. They had cookies. They had, like, a lot of stuff. This marks the first partnership for Viva Aerobus with a U.S. professional sports team and the first international partnership for the San Antonio Spurs. Love that logo on the tail. That's a sharp looking plane, isn't it? And you know that thing's decked out inside for those guys. And you know that that was a rough landing in uh, and win and like oh, this. Oh boy, yes, yes, definitely. Uh, not a fun day really across Texas to be taking off or landing on a plane because the wind is really whipping all across the Lone Star State thanks to the cold front that came through uh, this morning. So if you were out early, you may have run into a few little showers. Not a lot of rain out there with this cold front to help us out with our ongoing drought and uh, lack of rainfall situation. A reminder, uh, stage one water res restrictions for SAWS customers went into effect yesterday. Today, the aquifer down one tenth of a foot and six allergens in your Friday pollen count. Everything, including oak, is low. More on this busy forecast heading into the weekend coming up. So a lot of people that like lived in the north got up this morning and it was like 40 where I was and I got in the truck and drove down to the station and it was 60 and I went wow <laughs> I beat the cold front to downtown San Antonio and then she's still here and she's going well yeah but not for long because here it comes give it an hour <laughs> it didn't take long did it I know and it was weird because I, I was putting out trash cans <laughs> and it was all right yep then I went to go start the car to go to work, and it wasn't. It happened. <laughs> I it, like that. It happened real quick, and the front was actually a couple hours ahead of schedule, so things turned chilly very quickly today. Compared to this time yesterday, temperatures are down 20, almost 30 degrees as you go up into the hill country, and that puts us in the 30s in places like Fredericksburg and Kerrville, 43 in San Antonio, 49 in Pleasanton. My friends, yesterday our highs were we're in the 70s and 80s, not so much today. And you can think this strong late season cold front. Our winds are gusting up near 40 miles per hour in spots like Eagle Pass and Spofford here in San Antonio. Our highest gusts uh, is right around 33 this hour, 31 in New Braunfels and 31 in Kerrville. We'll continue to see cold and windy conditions for the rest of the day. We had a little light rain around early, early this morning. There are still a few sprinkles out there here or there, but our air has really dried out behind this front. So anything that tries to fall out of the sky most likely is going to get evaporated pretty quickly. So uh, rain not in forecast for the rest of the day. Skies will gradually start to clear out this afternoon and this evening. Temperature wise, we're in the 40s. That's where we stay for the remainder of the day. Even as we see some sun later this afternoon, it won't be for long enough to really warm us up very much. North winds will remain gusty at 40 to 45 miles per hour for the remainder of the day. It won't be until tomorrow morning that our wind speeds really start to let up. Satellite and radar is showing, of course, abundant cloud cover. Also, these little specks of green here, those are those sprinkles I was mentioning. But again, stuff is getting evaporated as it falls out of the sky, thanks to very dry air in place. Uh, a lot of cloud cover across the entire area, but I'll bring your attention out to the west. Showed you that clearing line that's starting to work into parts of Edwards um, and Kenny counties currently. That clearing line will continue some eastward progress this afternoon. I think by 5 o'clock here in San Antonio, along I-35, we're really starting to get some sun. But again, it won't be enough sun for long enough that it'll really have an impact on our temperatures. 8 p.m., Everyone seeing a good amount of clearing and then overnight completely clear skies. You pair that with the very dry air that we've got in place. Also winds starting to let up overnight and this is our late season freeze. We've been talking about this for a week now, so hopefully you're prepared. If you've got uh, friends or family, they've had a hectic week, maybe spring break plans and they were gone. They're coming back into town today. You'll want to give them a heads up that 
everyone is going to have a freeze tonight into Saturday morning. So if you've done any planting, you'll want to cover that sensitive vegetation, any potted plants out on the porch, the back porch, bring them on inside. Everyone will see a freeze and some parts of the area will see a hard freeze tonight. Uh, the hill country and southern Edwards Plateau. So we'll go from Kendall County, Blanco County, all the way out to Valverde County. You all have the best chance to spend the most time below freezing up to about 12 hours between late this evening through early tomorrow morning. So rural areas here across the hill country and the southern Edwards Plateau. This is where it'll be a bit more important if you've got outdoor plumbing pipes, keep those insulated, wrap them, cover them uh, because this is where a hard freeze is most likely through the overnight hours. Now across the hill country, having a freeze this late is uh, not on, you know, it's kind of normal. Actually, the average late freeze is mid to late March across the hill country for everyone else. Highway 90 and point south. The average last freeze is in February, so uh, a little late here for a lot of us, but the latest freeze we've ever had in San Antonio was in early April back in 1987. So no way around it now. Freeze tonight, another freeze likely Saturday night, and then the warming trend really starts. Next week looks a lot more seasonable, a lot more spring-like, if you will. Highs in the 70s and low 80s. Uh, only complaint here, aside from this freeze we've got, is that we don't have a good chance of rain in the next week. Uh, we need some rain. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And Cole could use a win for back to back titles, huh, Andy? Yeah, that's right. And they've got a serious challenge coming up on Saturday because they're playing the last team to win a state before them. So it's the last two state champions going to head to head tomorrow. But first, we'll recap yesterday's big win over Hitchcock. Cole used a 15 0 run to start the game, and they dominated from there. Plus, Braden Baum scored 23 for champion in their first state tournament game. Got the recap next. That guy pressed up on me, you know, it was in the set. Coach told me to go ahead and go. I hit him with a jab step and went to the rim and then got my two points. Cole senior Dre Ray got the Cougar fans on their feet with this monster jam in the third quarter of Cole's state semifinal victory over Hitchcock in big board sports. The Cole boys basketball team will play for the UIL Class 3A state title for the second straight season. The defending champs knocked out Hitchcock in the state semifinals yesterday afternoon, 53 to 49. Trey Blackmore led the way with a game high 23 points, including some crucial free throws down the stretch that helped fend off a late Bulldog rally. This is the Cougars' fourth straight appearance in the state tournament, and it marks the third straight season that Cole has won a game at state. But their next game might be their toughest test yet. Dallas Madison won the other semifinal against Wichita Falls City View 69-62. And the Trojans have their own pedigree. They last won the state title in 2019 and defeated the Cougars in the semifinals of that year. Then in 2020, both Cole and Dallas Madison advanced to the championship game, only to see that game canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the last two state champs meet again with it all on the line on Saturday. I think a lot of people want to see that game for years. Um, if you look back three years ago, they won a state championship. If you look back two years ago, we were supposed to meet in the state championship. And last year, we won a state championship. So um, for the last four years, including this year, it's going to be us or them winning a state championship. So, um, you know, we, we definitely are looking forward to the opportunity. Um, you know, we told our guys when we lost to them um, up in Dallas that, you know, it's pretty much, you know, we felt like we were going to be here. We felt like they were going to be here. Um, so we've kind of been preparing for that. We've been, you know, um, working towards that goal and you know it's finally here um, it'll come 10 o'clock on Saturday and we'll be ready to go. That game that coach Cantu was referring to was back on November 26. The Trojans defeated Cole in their only meeting this year at Duncanville 60 to 49. We'll see if the Cougars can flip the script and defend their title tomorrow at 10 a.m. in the Alamo Dome. The champion boys took the court at the Alamo Dome for the first time in program history last night. But despite an incredible first half performance, the Chargers came up short against Mansfield Timberview in the class 5A state semifinals 55 to 43. Junior Braden Baum had the hot hand hitting three three pointers en route to 15 first half points as champion built two different five-point leads. Baum finished with a game-high 23. Tate Owens' is three right here midway through the third quarter gave the Chargers a 30-28 lead, but that would prove to be their last of the game as the Wolves then countered with a 12-0 run to reestablish control. It may not be the ending the Chargers wanted, but they're still proud of their season.
I think this experience was amazing because we're more than just a team, we're a family, and it's just the bonds and relationship we've made with each other is, is quite amazing. The aspect and reality of being able to walk on that court for the first time with not just, like Braxton said, not just the team, but the whole family, uh, people we've known since we were little, it was amazing seeing everybody's faces, um, seeing how everybody was smiling out there. It's adding more fuel to the fire for next year. The Chargers finish their historic season with a 33 and 7 overall record. One more area team competes in the state semis this afternoon. Bernie against Wichita Falls Hershey. Tip off at the Dome is set for 3 p.m. We'll have highlights tonight on the 6 p.m. show. I am just about ready to head to the Dome right yeah. after the 6 p.m. show. Or excuse me, right after the noon. So. All right. Well, be careful. The wind's blowing. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's been a little cold. At least you'll be inside. Thank you, Andrew. The deadline to file your tax returns may sneak up on you pretty quick. However, that refund check might make uh, might take a while to hit your bank account. That's the bad news. What you can do to speed up the process coming up in the next half hour. And gas prices continue to rise even after San Antonio broke a record yesterday. However, drivers still need to fill up so you can find the lowest prices somewhere. We've got tips on how you can do it next. And with the cost of everyday items going up, you might be thinking of different ways you can save money. So let's start with your entertainment bill. Monthly streaming options can add up. So today at 5, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore's has some tips on where you can save money and even get access to your favorite movies or TV shows for free. The Senate passed a massive government funding bill last night, a measure that includes $13.6 billion in aid to Ukraine. The $1.5 trillion spending bill known, as, known on Capitol Hill as the Omnibus cleared the House Wednesday. It now heads to the President Biden's desk for his signature. Government funding was set to expire today, and lawmakers have been racing the clock to prevent a shutdown. The Senate also passed a stopgap measure to extend government funding through this coming Tuesday. That short-term funding extension gives congressional clerks Time to process the larger bill before sending it to the president for his signature. Soaring gas prices across America now being paired up with even higher inflation. The average cost per gallon in the U.S. now $4.33. That's up 57 cents from just a week ago. Here in San Antonio, not so much better. Today, the average price per gallon inched closer to $4. According to AAA, it's now at $3.98 for regular unleaded. The White House maintains the current hike in prices should be short-lived. However, the higher prices are likely to have a ripple effect, according to the experts. Everything you buy off the, the shelf in a store, it got there either by plane, train or automobile. And so those higher costs in time will filter through even to uh, non-petroleum uh, or, or uh, energy-related items. Politicians are going back and forth over who's to blame for this. Republicans say it's a result of President Biden canceling the Keystone Pipeline project. President Biden saying it's Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Ukraine that is to blame. And since gas prices are at an all-time high, you might want to compare those prices before you fill up. Right now on KSID.com, we've got a list of gas stations with the lowest prices per gallon all you got to do is take a picture of that QR code right there on your screen. The data is sourced from gas Buddy, so you want to keep in mind that there's no guarantee that those prices are specific or really accurate because it's people who are driving around that are sending them in. You can also use gas apps like gas Buddy, Waze, Gas Guru, or AAA to help you locate the lowest prices near you. Just don't drive around all over town looking for the cheapest gas and then I was about use to a lot say. of gas. Or... You can just take the easy road, sit back, relax, watch live cam. It's not a great day to be outside anyway. I, so cold weather lovers, I would really, really, really soak this one up because I don't know how many more of these we got before we, we, before we turn up the uh, Mother so Nature's heater. Really soak this one up is what you're saying. That occurred to me today. We, you know, it's gonna get hot for too long. And if you really love the cold weather, you will be missing days like this. So uh, really just sit back and, and take it in. Um, it is fairly unpleasant outside compared to what we were dealing with yesterday, sunny and seventies. But uh, again, give your, give your, you know, big sweaters and uh, your coats, uh, maybe one more 
uh, last go round here in the next couple of days before things get toasty late this spring and into summer. I'm showing you radar. There's not much to see here. We've got a few little specks of green showing up that indicates some sprinkles, some really, really light rain. Our air has dried out in a big way behind this front, so likely a lot of this that's trying to fall is not reaching the ground. It's likely being evaporated before it gets there. Um, Skies are clearing out west of 35. We'll see that here in San Antonio later this afternoon. It is cold out there. 37 Bernie Stage, 43 New, Bra New Braunfels, excuse me, also 43 Divine, 36 in Lost Maples. Winds are out of the north, 20 to 30 miles per hour in most spots, and gusts are approaching 35, 40 miles per hour. Your sustained wind speeds that are now about 20 to 30 will stay there for most of the rest of the day. They'll start to ease up a little bit overnight through early tomorrow morning, and it's the drop in wind speeds clearing skies tonight, and also just the cold air mass that moved in today that sets us up for a widespread freeze early tomorrow morning. If you missed it last half hour, I'll show you again the forecast low temperatures for Saturday. Everyone will be below freezing. We'll talk about that and what's ahead for the weekend coming up in just a bit. David. Thank you, Katie. Coming up in a few minutes in sports, the Spurs have another chance to make Greg Popovich the all-time winningest head coach in NBA history. And will DeJounte Murray be thinking about that when he's playing? There's a little pause there, wasn't there? And inflation, as inflation prices reach a 40-year high, dollar stores are actually known for having lower-priced paper and party goods. But how do they measure up to the other stories? Well, we got some price comparisons after the break. The deadline for filing your taxes is just a few weeks away. And just like last year, taxpayers can expect more delays from the IRS this year. However, you can take some steps on your end to help move things along a little faster. Part of the reason for the delays, the IRS still working on processing returns from the last tax season. The agency has also had to deal with staff shortages because of COVID-19. So what can you do to speed things up? The number one tip is to file electronically. If you're still putting your return in an envelope, licking a stamp and sticking it in the mail, I'm sorry to tell you that your return probably will take an extra six to eight weeks. This way to get your return is to do a direct transfer from the IRS. That way the money goes right into your bank account. But keep in mind that after your return is, pro after your return is processed and approved, it will still take about five days for the money to show up in your account. Also make sure you double check all your paperwork before you submit it. Little mistakes like typos can lead to big delays. We've been talking a lot about pricing uh, going up everywhere from gas stations to grocery stores and everyday needs are probably costing you more. But there are ways to save. Here's ABC's Becky Worley with helpful saving strategies you can use the next time you're planning a child's birthday party. Birthday parties are a big deal. <laughs> and they can be a big expense. So I went shopping at Dollar Tree here in Northern California and Target to parse out party savings with a list of the same 13 items from wrapping paper to hats and noisemakers. Which one do we like better? At Dollar Tree, there were some good options, but the inventory was a little lean at my location. It's going to get red cutlery and red plates, but there are no red plates. Inventory among dollar stores may vary, like their low stock on the items that you're looking for. Don't just give up. Go to another dollar store in the area. But I still created a nice theme. $17.25 before tax for all my party supplies. After my saving score, I headed to my local Target to try and buy comparable items. Tiara or hat? Mmm, gotta go with tiara. While they did have more themed birthday options, tons of choices when it comes to plates and napkins and cups, lots of variety. Compared to the dollar store total, that is a huge difference in price. Adjusting for a few differences in quantities, for example, 10 plates in one package versus 18 in another, the total cost before tax at Target would be $50.07. That compared to $17.25 at Dollar Tree. It's about a third of the cost. Some items where you can really save, 
you want to buy balloons from the dollar store, I mean, you, they have your basic colors. They also have foil balloons that maybe say happy birthday with different characters or themes. Other decorations also see significant savings, including birthday banners, this one at the Dollar Tree for $1. twenty-five, and at Target, $5. And the end result, not too different from each other. This is the Target birthday party setup. And this is the dollar store birthday party table. All I need now are some cute kids to come and enjoy this party. But what have I got? Teenagers. Happy birthday, dear kids. Blow them out. No. <laughs> Teenagers. That could have been <laughs> any <laughs> family with teenagers right there. <laughs> that, wow. That uh, eye roll was pretty good. Totally thrilled. <laughs> So I guess you really don't want a birthday party outside today, though. No, I was thinking about that. You know, even on a, a sunny but breezy day, keeping those tablecloths on the table can be a big chore. That today. was Southern California, by the way. Oh, yeah. well, there you good, go. Good for them. Uh, <laughs> it's a great place. Never been. I'm sure it's great. Uh, the aqua for today is down one tenth of a foot to 658.8. And in your pollen count, another pretty long list today. Six allergens reported. Everything is low. That's nice. Uh, uh, hopefully it'll stay that way tomorrow, even after today's gusty winds. Another look at the effects of today's cold front coming up. I guess the good news is it's going to be cold, but it's not going to last forever. It'll be quick, huh? Okay, so last day for the sweaters, Katie, please. Uh, well, you know, tomorrow is going to be a cool day. The morning will be cold. That's our freeze. By the afternoon, we'll get up to near 60 with some sun. So it'll still be cool tomorrow, but uh, not nearly as cold as it's going to be today, especially in the afternoon. Uh, so David, starting us off with the good news, let's go to some not so good news. Uh, this is the very latest drought monitor. This was released yesterday and that bright red area southwest of San Antonio that includes places like now parts of Atascosa County, um, Catula, uh, south of Eagle Pass. That's an area of extreme drought and compared to the past couple weeks, this area of extreme drought has grown in size and that's not a big surprise considering that we haven't had any rain the past couple of weeks. Um, so really, with the exception of this sliver of the I-35 corridor up through parts of Comal County, up closer to Travis County in Austin, uh, our entire area really needs some rain, especially south and west of San Antonio. Uh, rain fall over the past 24 hours as determined by our radar is as you can probably guess, not very impressive. Now comfort, it looks like you got right around a 10th of an inch of rain early this morning from some of those showers that were around before the cold front moved through. But as we zoom out a bit, it's just not great here. Two one hundredths of an inch of rain at the airport in San Antonio from today, this morning's very light shower activity. Unfortunately, over the next seven days, our rainfall outlook is very bleak off closer to the Houston area east of Gonzales over to Houston there in Harris County. They could pick up less than a quarter inch of rain. That's not a lot for them either. Uh, but our area does look dry over the next seven days, unfortunately. Today we've got the cold and the wind. Uh, temperature at the airport 43. North winds at 23 makes it feel like 34. We've got extensive cloud cover. But again, notice the clearing line that is slowly starting to move east. So we've got the sun out in Del Rio, Brackettville, Kinney County, and up to Rock Springs, Lakey. Things are clearing out for you right now. Uvalde, you'll get probably some peaks of sun here uh, early, early in the one o'clock hour. So this clearing line will continue to make eastward progress this afternoon. We should be able to get some sun here in San Antonio later this afternoon, but it won't be for long enough that it will have an effect on our temperatures. So your air temperature temperature is the number in white, the wind chill or what it feels like. That's the number in blue. So it's 43 at the airport, but it feels like 34. 
Same story up in New Braunfels. Up in Kerrville, it feels like 32, feels like 38 out in Del Rio. So the wind is making a big difference. Our sustained winds are between about 20 and 30 miles per hour, and our winds are now gusting up near 35, 40 miles per hour, especially places like Spofford there. It's going to stay windy for the rest of the day. Either way you slice it, our gusts will continue to be up near 40, 45 at most for the rest of the day through about midnight. During the overnight hours, our wind speeds will start to drop off such that by tomorrow morning there will be a bit of a lingering breeze, but winds will be much lighter. Our skies will be clear. Our air is very dry, along with being quite cold. All of this together is the setup for the late season freeze that is uh, going to take place tonight. The entire area from the hill country down to the coastal bend, uh, down to Catula and LaSalle County, all the way over to Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, everyone will see a freeze tonight. And there will be a hard freeze across parts of the hill country and southern Edwards Plateau. So um, it's actually not, um, it, this is in late, uh, never mind but a hard freeze is possible for parts of the hill country. I'm not even going to try to get tongue tied there. All right, so today staying cold, staying windy here. Skies clear out late this afternoon and this evening. Very cold start to the day tomorrow. 60 tomorrow afternoon, another freeze tomorrow night, and then closer to 70 on Sunday with a little bit of a breeze, a really comfortable day Sunday. Early next week, we get back into the 70s and 80s, much more spring-like for those that have next week off, guys. But this is not the latest we've had a freeze. No, that is early April. Yay. That's what I was trying to say. I know. That's why I brought I, I know what she's trying Thank to say. Thank you. <laughs> All right, the Spurs don't want to get frozen out anymore. They, they need a win to stay in that playoff hunt, but they need a win to get popped that record. Right? Yeah, depending on how you look at it, if you want to just put all the focus on the record, they've got 16 chances, right? There's 16 yeah. games left of the regular season. We just want to celebrate a little bit sooner and, you know, snap the skid. When we come back, we'll talk about the Spurs and their chance to give Greg Popovich his NBA leading 1,336th career victory. Plus, Roadrunners back in pads for the last practice before spring break. Here from the Roadrunners next. I feel like we got better today. I feel like we get better every day, but today was just one of those days you could really feel it as a practice picked up, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it was a good day. UTSA football's already got the pads on. They're feeling great about how they're practicing in big board sports, but first. The Spurs get another crack at earning head coach Greg Popovich's 1,336th career victory, which would be the most in NBA history tonight as they host the Jazz. And make no mistake, Utah will not be easy to beat. The Jazz are 41 and 24 overall, fourth in the Western Conference. But one guy you can count on showing up is DeJounte Murray, who's averaging 25 points, 10 assists, and 8.5 and rebounds per game in his last 10 appearances. That was basically the night he had against Toronto, even though he got a cut on his forehead in the third quarter. Murray did leave the game momentarily before returning to the lineup. No one wants to get Pop the record more than him. You know, I can't wait to get it for him. I know he's, he's, he's real humble about it, but it will be something, you know, we get it. We have to celebrate it that day and, uh, you know, let him feel that love. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and I know he don't play for that uh, or coach for that, I should say. But it's, it's an important milestone. Like I said, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh, and, you know, he deserve it. Uh, you know, a great, great, great man, uh, great coach. And, uh, you know, all the success he's had, he, he deserves it. So, you know, I can't wait till we get that for him. Let's hope they can end the waiting tonight. Tip off against the Jazz is set for 730 tonight at the AT&T Center. Head coach Jeff Trailer is getting the Roadrunners fired up already. UTSA practiced with pads for the first time since returning to the practice field earlier this week. Their attitude definitely showed, especially considering it came right before a 10-day break. Trailer says the timing of this practice was all about maintaining the team's energy and enthusiasm. Just wanted to get some work in before spring break. The psychological part of playing football five straight weeks without playing a game is pretty tough. So if you can sneak a few practices in before spring ball, because uh, they're really excited right now. They're loving it. Well, they're going to get a week off, and they're going to really enjoy those next six. Uh, then those last six, it's not quite so exciting, to be honest with you. So it's just more psychological than anything else. The Roadrunners will hold their spring fiesta game on Thursday, April 14th. That's a lot sooner than you think at Ferris Stadium. 
After three months of negotiations, Major League Baseball and the Players Association finally settled on a new collective bargaining agreement yesterday afternoon. The owners, owners voted unanimously to ratify the CBA. But the players were a little bit more mixed. Regardless, the five-year agreement did get the necessary votes to pass, which includes changes like the National League adopting a full-time designated hitter and an expanded 12-team playoff field. As a result, no games will be canceled outright, but the first six games of each team's season will be made up later in the year, meaning opening day is only a week later, now on April 7th. So here's a look at the new opening days for the Astros and the Rangers. Both will start on the road. Houston faces the Angels on Thursday, April 7th, and the Rangers take on the Blue Jays on April 8th. Some good matchups to get things started. Just happy to have baseball back at all. Yeah, I think I read somewhere where they're going to be doing a lot of double headers to make up for those games they lost. So, yeah, there's you know. going to be some negotiating. I know the Rangers are supposed to play the Yankees uh, for their opening day before that got canceled. So they're going to do some schedule yeah. reworking. Old, old school double headers. They don't do those anymore. I know our noon director, Donnie Baseball, is oh, pretty happy about this. Pumped. And it is a magical Friday on SA Live. Speaking of magic, from magic to chocolate to making some happy space. There's a little something for everybody today. So, Mike, what do you have for us? Well, of course, we have so much coming up here on SA Live, and it's a fun Friday, including a, a little bit of prestidigitation, or just easier to say, magic coming into your living room. The Magician's Agency is here. Always have some great tricks, just fascinating. Standing this close to them, can't even figure out what's going on. All right, a new happy space. How to bring the beauty of the garden inside your home. The best house plants for beginners. And then Renee's Twisted Chocolates featuring flavors from around the world. All right, Mellow Shrimp Po' Boys, Vegan and Meatless Friday. Yep, very friendly for the Lenten season. It's Friday, you know what that means, the KSAT Insider Prize Wheel. All new lineup of prizes and a chance to win, ready for this, $1,000. $1,000 gift card. I'm going to tell you how you can sign up and maybe spin the wheel sometime in the future. And then, of course, Fiona's going to take us out to a new spot for some vintage games, cocktails, and the fry fun that you could hope for. That and a whole lot more is coming up on this Friday edition of SA Live, so stick around. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. The U.S. is extending its mask mandate for air travel until at least April 18th. It was set to expire on March 19th. The mask mandate doesn't only apply to in the skies. The rule extends to travelers on airplanes, in airports, on trains and buses. The one month extension suggests that federal agencies are close to lifting the rule. Major League Baseball, a 99-day lockout is over. This comes after owners and the MLB Players Association reached a new collective bargaining agreement on Thursday afternoon. The deal passed with a 26-12 to 12 vote in favor of a new five-year deal. A big win for the players is minimum salaries beginning at $700,000 in 2022, making it an unprecedented 23% increase. Some fitness fans can now spin their way into riding a new Peloton without paying for the pricey bike. The struggling fitness company has a new leasing program combining bikes and class fees uh, for customers ranging from $60 to about $100 per month. For now, the experimental pricing system is only available in Texas, Florida, Minnesota, and Denver. And that's your Cheddar News and Tech Update. I'm Alicia Nieves from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. All right, staying cold and windy today. We will see some clearing this afternoon and this evening, but that clearing just helps to set us up for a widespread freeze tonight. 60 Saturday afternoon under sunny skies, a freeze again Saturday night, and then Sunday we inch closer to 70. Next week is looking pretty comfortable with highs in the 70s, even some low 80s there. Unfortunately, no good chance of beneficial rain in the forecast, guys. Thank you, Katie, and thank you for watching the news at noon with us. And coming up next, it's Friday, so you know it's going to be a fun day on SA Live, and it'll all get started right now. We're kicking off your Friday with a little bit of magic, where you can see the stars of the magic world right here in the Alamo City. Today on SA Live, I'm going to show you one of the newest bars in town where you can relive your childhood with great games and you know what the best part is? Now that you're a grown up, you can grab some drinks. So let's get this party started. And brand new prizes for our KSAT insiders. They're spinning the prize wheel and there's a winner every time. That's today on SA Live. Celebrate San Antonio. 
coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm Mike Osterhage. Fiona is off today, and boy, do we have a special treat for you today. We have some magic, but first, got us thinking about movies. What movie title would best describe your life? Two things came to mind at first. It's a Wonderful Life or It's a Mad, 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 Mad World. One of the two. I don't know whichever that one is. Anyway, let us know. We hope to get some of the answers a little bit later on in the show. Okay, there is movie magic and then there's actual magic. And you're not going to want to miss this because spring is here and the stars of Magic World will be visiting the Alamo City, each one for a limited time. Scott Pepper, our dear friend and from the Magicians Agency Theater is here. Good Hello. afternoon. Okay, what movie title describes Well, I life? guess mine's kind of easy because there's some very famous magic movies, so I guess it would be The Illusionist. Oh, I like that. Oh, very good. Okay. Well, now you see me. The other oh, one. Okay. okay, if I do a trick, it'll be Magic Mike. <laughs> Sorry about that one. Okay, you have... <laughs> that's why I'm not uh, on stage at the Magic... Anyway, uh, you've got a lot going on. Not just the magicians that come to town, but you have workshops now and also a shop where you can buy magic tricks. Absolutely, too, right? yeah. I bought some of the stuff we've got in our very cool magic shop. I wanted to show you this. Let's take... Uh, we got a blue deck here and a red deck. Uh, uh -huh. I'll go through these. You just say stop. Stop. Okay, have a look at that. I'm going to show the camera as well. Okay. There we go. Um, and actually, it doesn't matter if I've seen that, because I don't know if you saw, there's a red deck here as well, and I put a card on top there. Uh, do you remember the card you just saw? Yes. What was it? King of Diamonds. Turn it over. Oh, God. But no, you know how I did that? It was actually the only card in the deck. Actually, there wasn't even a deck. It was the only card there. Uh, full stop. Your card, the King of Diamonds. That one's called the Vanishing Card Deck. I made that up myself. I mean, not the trick. The name. Incredible, right? But, <laughs> okay. Here's one of our other ones. This is one like that um, movie, you know, with the stones. Not sure if I'm allowed to mention it, but there we go. Yeah. Six stones. <laughs> okay. Say no, uh, number between one and six. Uh, five. Five. Let's count. Uh, spell five. F-I-V-E. That gets to the ruby. Press the ruby for me, both sides. Good job, that activates it, watch. If we go like this, one, two, three, each one becomes the one you just chose, a ruby. But you know like in the movie where he snaps, when they snap, they all go back to uh, the same colors. Now if you just touch the top one for me, just the top one. The that, ruby? Yeah, just the ruby. That activates that side, but not that side. So when I put it through, these become ruby, these stay the same, and you can check that out. And that's called the magic gem stick. Kind of cool, right? And these again are, are these are available at the magic shop. You can come and learn these and take these home. And you can be not just read the instructions, but be taught by. Oh a yeah, we like will yourself. show you exactly how they're done, and you can go home becoming a real magician. Okay, speaking of magicians, yes, who is there tonight? So we have got Matt Marcy flying in from LA. He was one of the last acts we had in uh, uh, 2021, and mm -hmm. he's one of our favorite comedy magicians. Uh, he's what can I say about? Him? He's been all around the world on cruise ships. He's been at the Magic Castle since he was 18. Uh, I won't say how old he is now. And uh, <laughs> he's one of our <laughs> favorite comedy magicians. And uh, he's been on Penn and Teller Fullers twice now on the CW Network. Masters of Illusion. He's just a very, very funny comedy magician and will also blow your mind. Does he have a certain theme to his magic? He's a, just a very quirky, very fun uh, magician. So everything he does is mostly with everyday objects, so you can really relate to it. He does a lot of things with uh, cards and money and, and things like that. So a uh, lot of interaction as well from the audience. What do you like doing best? The, the real up close So as you know, like I this? used to be the big illusionist, right? Yeah. That's what I did. But now I tend to, I like uh, doing things again with everyday objects. I'm really into Rubik's Cube stuff at the minute. I, I should have bought one of those, but you can come see the show and see it in that. When I do my show, I do a lot of Rubik's Cube magic and also do some puzzle magic now. A lot of things where you have to use your mind a little bit. So I okay. like that kind of stuff. Because when you're this close, I mean, you have to be just precise and exact. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I don't do so much of this in my show, but we okay. do have one of our gentlemen who, who's been on here before, Max. Uh, he's our close up guy, and he'll do card magic that will just blow your mind from this close. So. Now, you've got another trick. Well, right? this is actually one of my favorites because what the other thing you're going to see in our theater is our collection of awesome magic posters. And I had these made. Oh, into a cool. deck of cards. Look, they're really cool. Every single one is different. And they're these beautiful ones. And we've got two different ones here. We're just going to take those out there. The kings. Now, if Fiona was here, you'd both be doing this. So you have to play the part of Mike and Fiona here. Okay. okay? So first, we're going to use the red king. I'm going to deal down. Whenever you want me to stop, just say stop, Mike. Stop. Okay. Now you're going to be Fiona. This would have been her choice. Okay. So okay. I'm going to go through. And whenever you want me to stop, you just tell me to stop. Stop. Very nice, Fiona. Thank you very much. 
<laughs> now you had a free choice of where you wanted to stop, and if I go through here, we've got um, like they're completely separate, and they're next to two other cards. So let's move those out there. Okay. Okay, and you see every single one of these is different. Well, that's a lie. There are actually two duplicates in here. And amazingly enough, your King of Diamonds found the David Devant poster, and actually the duplicate to that one. But check it out, the King of Spades found the masculine Cook one. But that's not where it ends. See, so your King of Diamonds also found the King of Hearts. Your King of Spades also found the King of Clubs, giving us the four kings. At which point, I know you're probably thinking this is a deck full of kings, and that would be very observant. But it's not. These are actually all the Ace of Spades. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Ooh, that was a mouthful. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Okay, I, and, and again, I'm a foot away from this thing. It's, uh, all right, you have shows on, what, uh, all Friday, weekend long? Yeah, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we got Matt Marcy. He's going to be here for a Friday at 7, Saturday at 7, Sunday at 2. And then straight away next weekend, we got Trig Watson, who I'm sure you remember from last year, oh, our yeah. digital magician, high-tech magician. Uh, he's going to be back for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday the week after as well. All right, and where is uh, Magician's Theatre located? Uh, we are at 217 Alamo Plaza, so just across from the Alamo. Uh, we're right there on Crockett Street. And you can come visit us and see our magic shop see the Magic Museum, it's going to be a lot of fun this weekend. And just be, I don't know if it's amazed or frustrated, or both, or something like <laughs> A little like bit that. of both, yeah. Okay, well, it's, Scott, thank you so very thank much, you, as Mike. always. And don't forget, Matt Marcy, tonight through Sunday, 7 p.m., Magicians Agency Theater, SALive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, in this Friday, a spot with vintage video games and cocktails to kick off your weekend, Fiona takes us to Kung Fu Saloon. Take a look. Well, you know, you have to hit it. You know why? To get the party started. Oh, okay. Here we go. Well, welcome to the dojo. We are here at the Kung Fu Saloon, and joining me right now is Assistant General Manager Wayne Skarbojeski, right? Did I get that right? Skarbojeski. Skarbojeski. Okay. <laughs> and that's, yes, and that's pretty much sums up the saloon, right? It's got some oomph, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about this bar, because it is incredibly fun. It is. The best thing that I like about working here is being able to throw a party every single night. Tell me about the games that you have here. Okay, well, one of our biggest popular ones is the Papa Shot. Always, always a crowd favorite. Ski Ball, which by the way is always free. Every single day. Um, we've got Guitar Hero, Mortal Kombat, Blitz. The classics. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I kind of have a little old school, a little bit of new, you know. And, you know, after folks have a couple of drinks, you know, they might want to sing, right? And you can accommodate that too? Absolutely. We've got two karaoke rooms. We've got a Carafun app that has a ton of songs. And more funny hats. <laughs> more funny hats. We've got an outdoor patio. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And is there a secret speakeasy bar? I can't tell you that's a secret. Oh, okay. I'm going to there... show you. Oh, all right. Okay, here we go. I'll follow you. Okay, hold on. We're by the bathroom. Is this, is this the door? The door. By the bathrooms, y'all. Exit into. Oh my gosh, you guys! Look at this! Oh! Oh, this is. Oh, this, I'm, I'm a kid again. This is so cool. A Ghostbusters speakeasy bar? What? Really, really hits. Really hits the nostalgia. And right over here. Of course. Oh! Oh my gosh, he's scared. It's Vigo! Vigo! Oh my gosh, and then of course we have a library. We've got Stapa, of Stay course, up. in full form. Absolutely, we got the guys on the building. All right, well now I'm behind the bar and I'm drunk with power. It might be the gong and it might be the hat, I don't know. But tell folks when you're open. Oh, well, we're open seven days a week. And does it cost to play the games every night? Almost every night except Sunday. Sunday the games are all free. Okay, and are there DJs? We do have DJs. We've got DJs on the weekends, both day and night. All right, tell folks how to get here and have some fun. We are at 5531 Northwest Loop 1604. And uh, you can find us at KungFuSaloon.com or Facebook, Kung Fu Saloon San Antonio. All right, for all that information, all you have to do is head to our website, SALive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right. 
And of course, there are some of their amazing cocktails and signature drinks, including the Ghostbusters themed one, which is the one, the blue one that you see there on the right. So as you heard, they're open seven days a week, Monday to Friday. Uh, they're open 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. And then on the weekends, they're open 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. And the enthusiasm you heard in that story with her going to the Ghostbusters room was legitimate. All right, ski ball though, yeah. free? Yeah, free all so the time. Yes, really? that is correct. And I know he mentioned it, but one more time, on Sundays, all the games are free to play. I love playing ski ball. What? <laughs> plays. All right, still ahead on SA Live. It all started with simple chocolate bars, how a local chocolate maker is growing his tasty business. And Jen has a brand new happy space, how to bring the beauty of the garden inside your home. The best house plants for beginners. That's next on SA Live.